Welcome back to Microsoft Access 2010 Beginner Level 1. For more free lessons on Microsoft Access, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. In Lesson 4, we're going to begin building our customer table. Now that we know our way around the Access interface, let's create our first table. Go back to your index cards and find the card for your customer table. These are all the fields that we're going to add to the table in the database. Now there are two ways to create a table. Click on the Create tab and here you'll see Table and Table Design. Now Table by itself puts us in Data Sheet View. And this is what Access started before. I personally don't care for Data Sheet View. Data Sheet View is okay for entering data, but if you're designing a new table, I recommend using Design View. So come over here and close this. If you're going to create a new table, I recommend clicking on Create and then Table Design. This is Table Design View. This is where we specify the structure of the table first before putting any of the data in it. And that's the main benefit of using a table in Access, is you can define the structure of the table and enforce rules and what kinds of data go into each field. Spreadsheet programs like Microsoft Excel just let anybody type anything anywhere on the sheet. Where with Access, we want strict control over what information goes where. Down below here, you can see we have three columns. The first column is where we type in the field name. Then we specify the data type, what kind of information does this field hold. Then optionally we can type in a description. So let's start off with our first field. In this case, first name. Remember, I don't like putting spaces in my field names. So it's capital first, no space, capital name. Now this is really more of a matter of style than anything else, but this is my personal preferred style. You might see some other Access developers or authors of other books use underscores. For example, first underscore name, that's perfectly fine too. In fact, they might not even capitalize first name. That's fine as well. The problem basically is that if you do use spaces in your field names, Later on, when we get into programming or writing macros or some SQL statements, you have to remember to put brackets around everything, and that just becomes a pain. So choose one method of naming your fields and maintain consistency. Personally, I recommend that you stick with my naming conventions. Once you've got first name typed in, press the tab key. Now we're at the data type column. This is where you specify what kind of data the first name field is going to store. If you drop this box down, you'll see the complete listing of all the different data types that Microsoft Access supports. The first type of data is text, and you'll probably use text fields more than anything else. Text fields are most printable characters, A through Z, uppercase and lowercase, and 0 through 9, plus pretty much everything else on the keyboard that is a printable character. Text fields can be up to 255 characters long, so they can store a decent amount of information. The next data type is a memo field. Memo fields are essentially very long text fields. Where text fields can only store 255 characters of data, a memo field can store over 65,000 characters of data. Memo fields also support formatted text. So if you want to bold or italicize some text, or maybe change the text color, you can use a memo field for that. Don't use memo fields for everything though, because they do lack some of the functionality that simple text fields have, and we'll talk about the differences in a future class. Essentially, for small bits of information like someone's name or their address or phone number, use a text field. If you have to type in lots and lots of information or formatted text, use a memo field. Next we have numbers. Number fields can store either counting numbers, also called integers, or decimal values, also called floating point values. 
unlike text fields, you can perform calculations on numbers. So you can calculate the sum or average of a bunch of number fields, for example. A date time field can store either a date or a time or both. So you could have January 1st, 1980 or just 4.55 p.m. Or you could have January 1st, 1980 at 4.55 p.m. Those are all valid date time values. Next we have the currency data type, which is a special number that is optimized for dealing with dollar values. A yes no field stores either a true or false value. It may be called yes no, true false, on off. These are called Boolean values. Next we have a very important data type called an auto number. An auto number is essentially an automatic counter field. It will start at 1 with the first record and access will automatically increment that number for you with each following record. So the next record is 2, then 3, and so on. You don't need to worry about maintaining that auto number yourself. We'll use auto numbers for identifying unique records. Each customer, for example, will have a customer ID that is an auto number. Next we have OLE objects. OLE stands for Object Linking and Embedding. And this is basically anything that you can copy and paste in Windows. It can be a picture, a document file, a video, an Excel spreadsheet, a sound clip, Anything you can copy and paste in Windows can generally be stored in an OLE object. Similar to an OLE object, an attachment data type field can store pretty much any kind of file in Windows. Attachment fields have some advantages and disadvantages. For example, attachments can be compressed to save space in the database. We'll talk about the differences between attachments and OLE objects in a future lesson. A hyperlink field is good for storing a link to a web page or an email address. If the user clicks on the hyperlink, their web browser or email program will launch automatically. A calculated field stores the result of a calculation in your table. For example, you might have sale price minus unit cost equals profit and you can store that in a profit field. Generally, I don't recommend using calculated fields. We're going to do calculations in our queries. There are some exceptions, and we'll talk about those later. Finally, we have the lookup wizard. The lookup wizard allows you to look up a value from another table. For example, you could use it to select a customer while you're in your order table. Personally, I don't like lookup wizards. We'll talk about lookup wizards in a future class. So now that we know the basics of all the different data types, which one do you think we should use for the first name field? That one's pretty easy. Let's pick text for that one. Now you can optionally type in a description over here. You don't have to. In fact, I almost never use descriptions. You can type in, this is the customer's first name, and that will explain to someone else using the database what this field represents. The description field will show up in the status bar on the bottom of a form when a user is typing in data into that field. But again, personally, I almost never use them. So let's move down here and type in the next field name. Let's go with last name. Last, no space, capital, name. We'll also make that a text field. Tab, tab. That'll move us to the next row. Now, what about fields for middle initial or middle name, prefix like Mr. or Miss, suffix like senior or junior? That's completely up to you. Create as many fields as you want to store whatever data you think you're ever going to need. For the purposes of class, I'm going to keep things simple and just use first name and last name. That's all I ever use in my business, and that's, I think, what most companies use. But, again, Break down your information as much as possible. If you ever think you're going to need it in the future, create a field for it. It's much easier to put data fields together later on than it is to try and split them apart. So if you ever think you're going to need a salutation field, add that in now. 
Continuing on, I'm going to type in a company name field. That's also text. Let's add an address field. That's also text. Now, I've always been happy with a single address field. Some people have address 1, address 2. I don't bother because an address line will wrap around to a second line if necessary if you go to print it out on a report. However, I've also seen some people break the address field down into the street number, the street name, and the street type, whether it's a drive, avenue, and so on. So that's really a decision that you have to make. For me personally, I've always been happy with a single address line. I will create separate fields for city, state, postal code, and country. And those are all text fields. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. And also, don't forget to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com YouTube for more advanced lessons and other specials just for YouTube viewers.